begin with the 2024 presidential race, a decision that will come down to how deeply Americans hold the very democracy that sustains our society. And also, stuff like this. Tonight, the former president, Donald Trump, fundraising off his mugshot again. He's now offering people the chance to buy this, quote, historic gift just in time for Christmas, mugshot edition, that's what they call it, digital trading cards. And if you buy 47 of them, you will get a piece of the suit Trump wore when his mugshot was taken. Now, to do all of that, it will run you about $4,600. My last two Trump digital trading card collections sold out in just hours. And now I'm back with my latest series called the Mugshot Edition. It is an authentic piece of the suit I wore when I took that now famous mugshot. And it was a great suit, believe me, a really good suit. It's all cut up and you're going to get a piece of it. I'll be autographing some of them. A true collector's item. This is something to give to your family, to your kids and grandchildren. Oh, yes. What a perfect gift for the dad you stopped talking to. I wish that I loved anything as much as Trump loves scamming his own supporters. And look, if you're thinking, oh, this isn't funny, he's tricking people out of their hard-earned money for pieces of fabric from indicted men's warehouse, Let's be honest, okay? It's not like this money was gonna otherwise end up in a Roth IRA. It was either an NFT of Trump or a second pet snake. In fact, the popularity of these NFTs makes me think that Biden should run this video as a campaign ad. Because if you can afford, right? If you can afford to blow five grand on a piece of a suit with mustard stains, the economy must be doing pretty good. And I'm... <laughs> I will, I will confess something to y'all. I, I actually think these are all really pretty cool cards. They got Trump as a soldier? Trump with lightning hands? Trump as a robot? But like, why don't any of these cards show off his amazing policy accomplishments? Like, like where's a card showing Trump tackling a doctor who's about to perform an abortion? Like, where's the one of him heroically catapulting a refugee child far away from his family? Oh, was that too much for you? Or how about one of him patriotically lighting a tiki torch for a neo-Nazi? Oh, uh, yeah, those was the days, y'all. Those was the days. Second term's gonna be great. All right, let's move on from something that's destroying America to something that's destroying the whole world. Climate change. Very uplifting for you tonight, I'm telling you. Everyone knows that it's time to stop talking and do something about the climate crisis. And that's just what the nations of the world are talking about doing. <laughs> An historic deal has just been announced at the COP28 climate conference in Dubai. It urges nations for the first time to transition away from fossil fuels. So the most significant thing about this is that agreement to transition away from fossil fuels. And in the 28 years of these summits, this is the first time the final agreement actually uses the words fossil fuels. Now, other key points of this deal include a call to triple the amount of renewable energy sources worldwide by 2030 while relying less on fossil fuels and achieve what's known as net zero carbon emissions globally by mid-century. And in the end, these are just words on paper. What matters now is whether or not nations quickly cut their planet warming emissions. That's right. The world's nations pledged net zero emissions by 2050, which is fantastic. But they also offered no plan to enforce it, which is not fantastic. This agreement is basically like when you tell a former coworker that you should get together sometime. Like, <laughs> yeah, we should totally grab a drink, definitely by 2050. I'll take <laughs> Even holding the conference in one of the oil capitals of the world was a major f you to climate change. It's like, it's like celebrating Hanukkah at Kanye's house. Like, look, I'm not, I'm not saying COP28 was a bad idea itself. Like, people's Insta posts look super fun, but maybe there should be some consequences for not achieving your goals, aside from, you know, like the whole world ending thing. Either way, look, congratulations, COP28. You may not have solved the climate crisis, but you didn't not 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 solve it. <laughs> and finally, let's talk about gerrymandering. It's the reason some congressional districts in America look like a Rorschach test. Well, that one just looks like my kindergarten teacher yelling at me. 
Gerrymandering is when politicians draw districts to help their party win because the alternative is winning on your ideas, and that's like way harder. <laughs> With Congress so closely divided, control of the House could hinge on which party gerrymanders the best, which is why a court decision in New York could change everything. New York's highest court has thrown out the state's congressional map, a ruling seen as a major win for Democrats. The new maps to be drawn by the Independent Redistricting Commission could give Democrats a shot to take back the U.S. House. A high court ruled last year that Democrats had unconstitutionally gerrymandered districts. A neutral court-appointed special master drew new lines that helped Republicans flip four seats last November. But judges today said those maps were only supposed to be temporary, and in a four to three vote, the Court of Appeals upheld a challenge and tossed out the current maps. That's right. New York's highest court is letting Democrats gerrymander again, which is not good for democracy. Unless it helps Democrats protect democracy, in which case being bad for democracy is good for democracy. I'm so confused. Oh, my kindergarten teacher was right. I am stupid. The question is, is it unethical for Democrats to engage in gerrymandering? And to debate this moral dilemma, we turn to Ronnie Chang and Desi Lydic. <laughs> Ronnie, let me, let me actually start with you. Should Democrats be doing the thing they've always criticized Republicans for? Of course not, Cal. And after that question, and I mean no disrespect, but I've lost all respect for you. Like Trump says, like Trump says about his sons, two wrongs don't make a right, okay? <laughs> In the Olympics, when Russia gets caught doping, we punish them. We don't let every other country start doping. All that would do is create a world of athletes with tiny balls the size of sesame seeds. Okay. That's a fair point. Desi, what do you think? Well, Cal, in my professional opinion, I think Ronnie should stop being such a little bitch. <laughs> when your opponent plays dirty, you throw on your brass knuckles and punch him right in the sesame seeds. <laughs> you don't stand there complaining about the rules. You take the rule book, you rip it in half, you shove half of it down their throats and the other half up their butts, and then the whole book is in their stomach while your arms are still in there and you're just playing them like an accordion until you win back Desi, that's gross. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> See, this is the problem with America, okay? Every solution is just more of the same problem. That's how you end up with an app on your phone to tell you you're using your phone too much, you <laughs> children. <laughs> Where does this end, Desi? Where does it end? It doesn't end, Ronnie. In fact, why should Democrats stop at gerrymandering? Hell, stack the court, steal the election, go to third base during Beetlejuice. Why do the Republicans get to have all the fun? Desi, that is anarchy. Yeah, but they started it, Cal. It's like I said to that tow truck driver, if you're gonna take my car, I'm taking yours. And my car was already attached, so now I got two cars. Math checks out. Cal, this is the slippery slope I'm talking about, okay? This great nation that I've lived in on and off for a few years was founded on principles. And when we give up those principles, whatever they are, we give up on ourselves. That's a beautiful sentiment, Ronnie. Yeah, that's a beautiful sentiment, Ronnie. <laughs> ha, too bad I just gerrymandered your box, bitch. Yo, hold on. Yo, what the hell? This is my box. Hey, Cal, do something. <laughs> Desi, yeah, Desi Lina and Roddy Chang, everybody. Yeah.